Motor Week is made possible by Tire Rack. Well, hello and welcome again to Motor Week. We're glad to have you with us. There was a time in the 1980s when hot hatchbacks, high performance versions of otherwise mundane econo boxes, were all the rage. They were the true sporting hardware for car enthusiasts on a budget. And the king of the hot hatches was the Volkswagen GTI. First built on the Rabbit platform and then on the Golf, the GTI impressed our Motor Week crew every time we got behind the wheel. And while most manufacturers have dropped these tiny performers from their line, Volkswagen's hung in there. They've built a new GTI based on this Golf 3. And boy, are we glad they did. It's been over a dozen years since VW invented the pocket rocket with the 1983 GTI. And while it was a performance car milestone, this 95 Volkswagen GTI VR6 has a lot more things going for it than the rabbit-based GTIs ever did. To start with, six cylinders, two more than any previous GTI. And these six form VW's superb narrow-angle 2.8-liter VR6 engine. Dual overhead cams drive 24 valves to produce 172 horsepower and 173 pound-feet of torque. Impressive numbers, and gave us some equally impressive numbers at the track. Like a scant 6.7 seconds from 0 to 60. There was good grunt off the line, too, as 85% of the engine's torque is available at only 2,000 RPM. The standard low-speed traction control system did a good job of controlling torque steer, a problem in GTIs of old. A close ratio 5-speed manual is the sole transmission available. But GTIs use cable shift linkage instead of the Golf's rod type, so the long throws feel a bit rubbery. Still, the well-matched drivetrain pulled our GTI through the quarter mile in a brief 15 seconds flat at 95 miles per hour. But it takes more than raw speed to successfully negotiate a road circuit. In our case, West Virginia's two-mile-long Summit Point Raceway. There we found the front-wheel drive GTI to be very tossable, steerable by wheel and by throttle. Its four-wheel independent suspension features a larger anti-roll bar up front and firmer gas shock valving all around. Although our test car wore good-sized 50 series tires, their harshness conspired with copious body roll for more side slip and corners than expected. Still, the GTI was more fun to slice around Summit Point than some race-prepared cars we've tried. And they won't raise their inside tire in the traditional VW salute, either. Stopping on track or off is made easy thanks to huge four-wheel disc brakes with standard anti-lock. They took our 2,800-pound GTI from 60 to zero in a fine average of 117 feet. Stops were straight and sure with good pedal feel and no fade. Back on the street, our GTI was perfectly at home in everyday driving. Any lack of decorum on the track was made up for by a very commendable ride. EPA ratings are 18 city and 25 highway, with our test loop producing 22 on average. And our 67 decibel sound reading is very good for a performance car. To stock Golf 3 styling, the GTI adds fog lamps in the bumper, two rather than three grill slats, along with a bright VR6 logo, and a telltale swept-back radio antenna resides on the roof. Styling out back is also pure Golf, but GTI adds a window-mounted spoiler with center stop lamp, larger, darker tail lamps, and the name of the little missile that just passed you. Inside, you're greeted by brightly patterned cloth seats and a voluminous interior. This is still a great car for the Jolly Green Giant. Dash and interior trim are purposeful, not luxurious, and control placement is generally excellent. The only leather in a GTI covers the steering wheel, which in turn houses the driver's airbag. There's one for the passenger, too. Although not as complete as we'd like, the analog gauges are as clear as any we've seen. The sport bucket seats provide great support with a variety of manual adjustments, including VW's signature up and forward, down and back motion and a tilt wheel to provide endless driving positions. Standard seat heat is appreciated too. The CFC-free HVAC system works with only three large rotary knobs and a few oversized switches. And while those controlling the premium cassette stereo unit could be a bit larger, its eight speakers provide great sound. A six CD changer is optional. Standard is a multi-function trip computer operated by a fingertip control. The remote hatch release hides inside a locking console storage compartment, adjacent to twin cup holders. 
The GTI's upright cabin means lots of rear seat headroom too. A cup holder here pops out from the rear console. Practicality is well served by the 60-40 split bench, which folds in sections or entirely to form a flat cargo area of 41 cubic feet. The easy opening hatchback provides 17 and a half cubic feet of covered storage when the rear seat is in use. Leaving the GTI is a unique experience thanks to the central locking system's convenience close feature for the power windows and the glass sunroof. GTI safety includes dual airbags, anti-lock brakes, traction control, and 5 mile per hour bumpers. And though two-door GTIs have anti-intrusion side door beams, they don't quite meet the Fed's 1997 standards like the four-door Golfs do. And the tab for all this performance, practicality, safety, and fun, $18,875. And that was the sticker on our test GTI 2. Options are limited to clear coat paint and a CD player. So in these days of pricey performance, the GTI certainly qualifies as a bargain. But the GTI is much more. It's the final signal that Volkswagen is back in the groove with a clear vision of a future that begins in the past.